Hey guys, so excited. The post office finally came, dropped off my spreader for feed, seed, and fertilizer. And, uh, oh, yes, for the winter, of course, here too. I have corn to fertilize. It's long overdue, but it's supposed to rain tonight, and it hasn't rained here in a week and a half. So it's perfect timing. And actually, it's really light. It's like uh, 10 or 15 pounds, so that's a bonus. So this is the, uh, well, as you can see here, the rack-mounted all-purpose ATV spreader. I bought it from a place in uh, Manitoba, actually. I just searched for something online that I could broadcast fertilizer with, and this came up, and uh, I, don't even remember, I don't even remember how much it costs now. It's been so long since I ordered it. But anyway, we're going to get it out of the box, get it mounted, get it full of fertilizer, and start spreading. So here's the contents out of the box. It comes with, uh, looks like pretty simple instructions here to put it together. And then we'll throw it on the bike. First thing we're going to mount is the motor to the inside of the hopper. Slides through the bottom, the shaft. Alright, step one's complete. The motor's mounted. Two bolts on either side. Uh, this is the way I mounted them. The hardware is nice too, actually. It's stainless, so if you do use it for fertilizer or salt, it's not going to be destroyed anytime soon. The power wire does go through the box, and don't forget to put the rubber grommet here so your product doesn't all fall out. So now we'll go on to step two. So one thing to note before I go any further is when you're mounting your bracket, make sure the wire actually points towards the hole that feeds through where the grommet goes through. So the next step was to mount the, the spinning disc here that broadcasts your product. And there's a hole in the shaft and there's a hole in the disc and you put a cotter pin through and that's how it secures it. Now, whether I lost it or it didn't come with it, I didn't have a cotter pin in my kit. No big deal, I have lots, I put one in. And now we have a control rod for how much product we want to send through. So the next step we're going to do right now is mount these two mounting tubes that mount to the ATV onto the hopper. And I've just set the hopper on a pair of saw horses. Hold it up for me. And uh, we'll put these long bolts down through here. Well, we can do that now. One. Two. Always a curious animal around here, and this has got to be one of the most curious. You get something new and they're always around to check it out. Okay, step whatever, four. We're just going to throw this cross member on here. Nut and bolt go through. We got our arms mounted. Nuts go inside here, nuts and bolts. And that's like that. So I've got that cross member already mounted up to the front here. And now what I already did was mounted the metering lever. And now the rod has to get connected to it. In order to do that, you've got to unscrew this. Set it through. Give it a turn. Put it on. Screw this back on. And there we've got it. That's all there is to putting this thing together. As you can see, if I can get it out of the way of the sawhorse. All the way back like this, you can see it's got 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 stamped on it. All the way back is closed, and that's probably, yeah, that's fully open. You can see the holes where the product comes through. You can 
turn this knob and say you just want to set it to 20. You can just stop it there. If that's your happy medium. And that opens it about three quarters. So now I'm just going to grab the four wheeler and we're going to mount it on the bike. Alright, well I pulled the old cat out of the garage. I've got the Byers ATV spreader mounted. Now what I did here is uh, it's I wanted to put it in the center of the bike, but because I've got this hump here, it didn't fit between these bars, so I just offset it. No big deal. It fits. It does a pretty good job of being universal. Um, I've just got two clamps here, one on either side for stability, and it's not definitely not going anywhere. It'll hold it solid. Now, I've got my electrical plugged in. And it's plugged into the 12 volt port on the bike and the switch is pretty user friendly. And it should rotate counterclockwise. There it goes. Now all that's left is to fill it with some fertilizer and give it a test. Now before you fill it with fertilizer, make sure your gate's closed on the bottom. Otherwise you'll have a lot in one spot. Alright, I've got one full 25 kilogram bag of fertilizer in there, it's over 50 pounds. It also came with this little shower cap you can put on top of it, mostly to keep the weather out if you've got salt or sand in the winter, but I'm going to throw it on just so it helps keep the product in there until I get back to the corn, and that's where we're headed right now. Alright, we're sitting here in the corn, we're going to start it up, we're going to see how she goes. So that was pretty sweet. I've got like fertilizer 10 to 15 feet broadcasted on either side of me. So that'll make a quick time of fertilizing this corn. Alright guys, we're done fertilizing. I did the corn, watermelon, pumpkins, did it all. I love this thing. The broadcast range on it's amazing. And the best thing about it too is the way that it spins counterclockwise is uh, when it falls out of the gate here, it throws it away from the bike. So it never hits the bike, never hits you. It works just as intended. But something to note, if you want to run this thing full tilt, which I don't suggest unless you're doing heavy fertilizing or seeding or salting, I don't know, whatever. You will go through a 50 pound bag of fertilizer in about a minute. It will broadcast the heck out of it. Other than that, I've got mine set here at a pretty good ratio. Uh, I got it at 15 and that came out just right for me. I think it's uh, spread out really good. I did go through a bag and a half. I have uh, just over an acre of things I fertilized, but I really wanted to put it down heavy. And that's it. I really love this thing. I'm, I'm very happy with it. I, I'm pretty sure it was around $300, and I did buy it from Absolute Auto Guard. That was the name of the website. And it was again, it was uh, Winnipeg, Manitoba. <laughs> as soon as I get the camera out, everybody wants their camera time. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you soon.